and three quarters. Stand by. Steady as she goes. Captain? Welcome aboard the Liberty Bell. I'm your captain, Horace Bixby, and my pilot with me here on the Texas deck is a young cub that goes by the name of Sam Clements. He's marking his 100th voyage down the river today with nary a calamity on his watch. So far. Uh, Sam knows this river like his own backyard. Uh, Sam, tell our guest everything you know about this river. Well, now, I always figure it is better to keep your mouth shut and appear stupid than to open it and remove all doubt. But I will tell you this. I love this river more than anything else. I love this river, even from the time I was a toddler back in Missouri. Before we get too much further out of port, I think I should mention that you best not be sitting on those handrails. They're the only thing between you and the river, and the river don't always take kindly to uninvited guests. We've also had reports of river pirates operating in the vicinity, so I wouldn't lean out beyond those rails for that reason either. Now, for those of you on the port side, that river town we're passing is frontier land. A few years back, it was no more than a boom town carved out of the wilderness by a handful of settlers looking to start a new life. Today, gentility and decorum are running rampant. Oh, it still has its share of footloose trappers, keelboaters, prospectors, and an Indian or two. But mostly, it's flush time and well on its way to becoming a fine big city. Frontierland reminds me some of my own hometown, Hannibal. It takes me back to when I was a barefoot boy growing up alongside the riverbanks. You know, it seems to me that when I was younger, I could remember everything, whether it happened or not. But as I grow older, I, I seem to remember only the things that never happened at all. See that peak just beyond the outskirts of Frontierland? That's Chickapin Hill, or at least it used to be. Dam burst a few years back, and folks been calling it Splash Mountain ever since. Some have even taken to riding hollowed out logs over the big falls. Seems far fetched, I know, but it's the truth. All my life, it seems I never could tell a lie that anybody would doubt, nor a truth that anybody would believe. But believe me when I tell you, truth is the most valuable thing we have, so I make sure I only use it for the economy. over across the way on the starboard side was my stomping grounds when I was young. Exceedingly young. Marvelously young. Young by hundreds of years. Younger than I will ever be again. It's called Tom Sawyer's Island and is named for a friend from my boyhood. Even today, the only way you can get there is by raft. Old man Harper's grain mill is there, back in the woods just off Tom's Landing. And that's Muff Potter's Pond and his windmill. We almost hang off once. And there's Huck's land. I always did like Huck. He could swear just wonderful. He and Tom and I spent most of our wild and reckless youth exploring that island. Lots of caves. Lots of adventure, if you know where to look. And we all knew where to look. That Superstition Bridge, it connects the big island to the little one. And if you follow the wilderness trail there, it'll lead you right up to the gates of Fort Lang. It's the last trade now, folks, before we head into Indian country. Look off to the port side there. Every now and then, the water under that crest of rock comes to a natural boil and spurts out all over the place like a tea kettle left on the fire too long. The Indians around here used to tell me these geysers were actually unfriendly spirits, upset by uninvited trespassers traipsing all over their sacred hunting grounds. Be that as it may, that's Big Thunder Mountain poking up in the sky over there. 
Indians named it that because the sound of the falls was the day when the big rains came. And the miners and prospectors and get-rich-quick speculators showed up, and the name stuck because of the sound of blasting powder going off every few minutes. There's not so much blasting these days, just ghost stories. Runaway mine train loaded down with simple-hearted, terror-filled folks like you. Drifted out of the bayou. Off to port, Captain. It's Beacon Joe. Old Beacon's been marking this river for longer than I can remember. Every time the river cuts a new channel, Old Beacon puts out a marker to let us know whether it's safe to travel or not. However, Sam here has been bragging that if push came to shove, he could navigate the Liberty Bell on a heavy dew. <laughs> Isn't that so, Sam? Well, I was born humble, Captain, but mostly it's worn off. Captain, Indian Village to port. Now that's something you don't see much out this way. That's an Algonquin Indian village. Looks to be from the Powhatan tribe. But usually they stay further east. I've seen Seminole and Miami in as far west, and of course Shoshone, Blackfeet, and Crow, but I've never seen Algonquins out here. Lots of game out this way. I've seen moose and deer and plenty of other critters along the shoreline. Uh, could be why the Powhatans are out this far. You know, just following the food trail.
Attention deck watch. Shoals to port and starboard. Engine room, steady on. We're entering shallow water, but uh, there's no cause for worry. Sam knows every shoal and shallow, every snag and sandbar in this part of the river. And he'll navigate us through to save water. You wouldn't steer us wrong, would you, Sam? I believe we ought never to do wrong, Captain. Especially when others are looking. Leadsman, sing out. By the mark, mark, mark. For the last three, half twain, half twain, half mark twain. For the last, red flag, red flag, touch it. Those of you that have been this way before know that the water can get fairly shallow along this stretch of the river. The leadsmen call out the depth. Each mark is a fathom or six feet. Mark Twain is two fathoms, and for us that means a safe water. Captain, we're passing Cutthroat Corner. Attention deck crew, stay alert. River pirates out here, this is where they'll most likely be. I can hear them from here. Not from all the commotion, it sounds like their interests lie elsewhere. the island, that's Fort Langhorne. Most of these old forts started out as trading posts. Then as settlers started heading west, the army came in and took them over. My feeling is, these days, there's a lot less frontier and a lot more civilization than is truly necessary. Give me a depth reading. Sing out. By the mark, half twain, half one, half twain, no bother, save water, half twain, back over yonder there in the woods. I've heard folks hereabouts say it's haunted. They say it was built on sacred Indian burial grounds, so now it's filled with spirits. If you ask me, I'd say the ones telling those tales are the ones filled with spirits. If you want proof, just ask them. They got it. About a hundred proof, I reckon. And whatever you do, don't strike any matches if they aim to breathe in your direction. You won't just be seeing ghosts. You'll be joining them. We're approaching Liberty Square, which is home port for us. We'll be putting into dock shortly, so those of you on the upper two decks might be of a mind to collect all your parcels and head to the lower deck. You got young'uns, you'll want to take them in hand before they get out of hand. On behalf of the captain, myself, and the crew, thanks for flying the waterways with us, and I hope I see you next time around the river bend. Thanks, Sam, and uh, thank you, everyone, for traveling the rivers of America with us today. Engine room. Approach levy at one quarter steam. Man the bow line. Purser, check freight and cargo. All hands prepare to dock. All passengers, stand by to go ashore.